welcome to Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie and I'm here to impart some knowledge to you today via a two minute art tip. And today's tip is um, a little bit of practical information regarding colored pencil. I would probably consider colored pencil my primary area where, you know, I feel the most comfortable. So I've got some like five or six little tips plus a little demo at the end to show you that can make your life easier and improve your colored pencil technique kind of pretty easily, no expense hardly at all. First tip, stop thinking that your colored pencil work is gonna go quickly. It's not, it's never going to go quickly. It's a very, very slow process. If you think about it, the physics of it, you have a small pencil with a very, very small tip and you're covering a large surface area multiple, multiple times. It's not gonna be just a couple hours, folks. It's just gonna take a while. And as long as you understand that and you're patient with it and understand that it's a process, then your colored pencil will get better because you're not gonna be rushing it and you know gouging into the paper with too much pressure and stuff like that. Two, it's about the build. And what I mean by that is, that any of the colors that you see, you know, like if you're working from a photograph, or if you're working from life, they're never just straight out of the pack. They're always a little bit of nuance. And when you understand that and you're not using your colored pencils like a crayon and, you know, just going straight to the color that you see, but like building it with a combination of two or three colors, um, warms, cools, neutrals, and stuff like that, you get a much richer tone overall. It's much more interesting for the viewer and it's it's got a richness to it, a life to it that's kind of much more amazing than just, you know, straight blue or something like that. Then number three is pick a surface, stick to it. The best way to learn is consistency. And so when you have a surface that you feel comfortable with, kind of stick with that and don't go like playing around on watercolor paper and expecting the same result, and then coming back to illustration board and then going to Bristol, doing all that kind of stuff. Work in one area when you're learning and get used to that and then see how those same techniques apply to other surfaces later on when you're a little bit more comfortable. Then I will tell you, that you do need a variety of sharpeners. Now, I know that I have talked a lot about the Faber-Castell pencil sharpener a bunch because it is specifically designed for colored pencil in that you have a couple of openings. You have Universals, which has a large um, tip and then a much, much narrower tip. And then it has one specifically for colored pencil. So you're not getting your graphite into your colored pencil area and mixing color back and forth. I find that I like a lot of different shapes of points for when I'm working. And the reason is, is that they make completely different line quality. They, they make totally different applications. And so I want to show you a little bit about what I'm talking about. When your colored pencil is kind of blunted a little bit and it doesn't have a really, really sharp point on it, this is perfect for covering large areas. I kind of use it sideways and just kind of lay it in like this. Now, this will cover a large amount of space fairly quickly. I'm not sure how, you, how well you can see this. I may have to darken it so you can see it a little bit easier, but this is a little bit more heavy handed than how I would use it. But as you can see, when you use it like this, even on this smooth bristle, we have little areas of irregularity where the color application isn't exactly even. Now, one thing I'll tell you is that some people ask me, well, how do you get that kind of smooth consistency and stuff like that? There's a couple things to it. You'll see a lot of colored pencil um, people, they'll actually hold their pencil like this, and then they do like almost like a sideways hatch mark. And I do that too, um, and there are places for that. Now, when you have directionality, where you have a, sh a shape that has um, implied direction or a curve or something like this, this works fine. There are some instances though, where this technique does not work fine because you can't escape the, the little hatch marks that are in there over time. You are having to kind of compensate for those and blend them in and stuff like that. So what I suggest is, that when you have a blunted surface like this, it's really, really nice 
to take your pencil and actually do like a smooth like a rounded stroke and then build up the darkness that way that way you don't have any kind of hatch mark or directionality in there it's just this kind of glow that kind of comes from that and you can see by just kind of hanging out in one space you darken it but you don't have any kind of like line line lines you know like there's n nothing in there that would let you know how that was created exactly so that's why i like the little you know part where it's not like super pointy however let's say that we wanted to you know get this a little bit more direct and you wanted a more even application like I, this is actually um, just a, like a little metal sharpener, one blade sharpener, it works great. And I really like the tip that it makes on this, but you can actually come back in and with this sharp point, it gets into all those little teeny white spaces and you get a much more even color that way. And you can also like turn it and then make a you know, a beautiful, sharp, precise line and stuff, and then just come right back to what you're doing. That's one way I like to do that. So make sure that you have a variety of sharpeners available whenever you're working, because you're gonna wanna move back and forth between colors and stuff like that. The last little thing that I wanted to show you was how to build a believable kind of skin tone. And I wanna show you this in kind of like a time-lapse demo, but what I'll tell you is, one of my very favorite colors to work with is ivory and cream. I'm working with a Faber-Castell set because I do that a lot, but I can tell you that these are great foundations. This is for like white or Caucasian skin tones, works great with this. And then I also use like this kind of, it actually seems really yellow, but it's wonderful, um, like a buttery caramel for blending skin tones you know for darker skin tones and i really find that that works well for me so i'm going to show you a little bit about how i build and then blend skin tones um with each of these colors so here's a little uh peek in how i do this right here we're going to be using some ivory or cream and this is what i first lay down and this kind of helps me establish shadow shapes you probably on camera aren't seeing much of anything because against the white of the paper this is very very subtle but this is a great way to kind of lay in first shadow shapes because there is some variation in this color that you get with a little bit of added pressure and stuff i can tell you that i've been working in colored pencils since i was in high school i got a set for christmas my first set of course was prismacolor because gosh that was what everybody had back in the day but it wasn't until i came to cheap joe's and met with faber castell reps that i got like really really into colored pencil because you know i find that like oil-based colored pencil offers so many other color options and blending options that just wax-based color doesn't because of your ability to layer so whereas wax base builds up and gets waxy and you have bloom with oil-based ones like Faber and the Sennelier ones, you really don't have that. So that first color was ivory. And then what I would do is I would come back with like this color I use a lot. It's a medium flesh. So this adds a rosiness to everything. So it looks like you have blood flow to the skin, which is important. I collapse and and dye so this adds a little warmth in in combination with uh, the cream color that we've already got down you can see it's not just pink it's not just blue pink it's got like apricot tones and some warm peachy tones now i like using the same color when i'm doing darker skin tones because the warmth of the skin everybody has that kind of warm rosy tone underneath no matter what color your skin is. And then probably the next color I would use is, um, as you can see, I'm in love with this one. That's why it's stubby. This one's called cinnamon and it's got a little bit bronzier 
of a tone. So it's a great build for darker shadow shapes on the skin. Now, you also see that I've got like little teeny beads of like color that are building up where each of these colors are hitting on top of each other. That's fine. Don't freak out. I'll show you how you fix it so it doesn't look like it's been hit with a pellet gun. Um, we're going to smooth all this out. So we've got some real warmth building up here. And then we're going to take this one, which is light yellow ochre. This one kind of cuts the pink so much and you can get like a bronzier kind of feel, like a sun-kissed kind of feel. So you can see how that looks. And then I also use one like this. This one is a brown ochre. So you can get like a little feel for how these look kind of next to each other. Now, this is just a basic build. I'm going to show you a trickety trick in a second here. So when I blend, I have to come back over the top of this. What I'm going to do is all these little teeny kind of specky irregularities, we're going to take those out. And what we're going to do is we're using this cream color, which now serves almost as a neutral. And we're going to blend all this out. This causes all this little pigment lay down that you have already established here to blend together. And so you get a seamlessness and your transitions between your colors look like heavenly and they're really, really wonderful. You can use whatever color you want for these kind of build and blends and stuff like that. It depends on what your final result is that you're going for but the premise is still the same. So whether it is that you're doing flower petals or, you know, anything else, you might, you might use, a, you know, like a light blue or even a lavender to, you know, blend your transitions together. It's whatever works in that particular space. I'm not saying that ivory or cream is the end all be all of colored pencil existence. That's not what I mean. But you can see here, it doesn't take too, too long before we're getting all of those like little specky dots to blend in together and they look really amazing. So hopefully this gives you a feel and if you've never tried colored pencil before, this can maybe eliminate some of the fear, make you feel a little bit more comfortable about trying it. It's very soothing, it's very relaxing, but it is not for the impatient. And I, you know, and I can tell you that in other media, I don't have any patience. I don't know why I like this because <laughs> it's not typically my kind of thing, but I will show you a piece that I'm working on right now. And we'll put up a picture so you can kind of see this exact same kind of build in like a real world application. So hope this is helpful and thanks for joining us. And we hope that you enjoy.